This glass, do you think is half full or do you think is half empty? I'm going to come back to this. Okay, so I was arrested in Ghana and I just really want to share my experience. I don't really want this video to be too long because if I want to explain into detail everything that happened is really going to take a very long video. I want this video to be as short as possible and I'm going to really summarize. I was there at the Bista Hotel in the morning. I woke up and I was going to go to Kumasi. I was going, heading back to the Bista Hotel, anyone that knows uh, Ghana very well, it's not far from the airport. And I thought, let me just take a walk instead of uh, getting a taxi. And then it would be a nice um, opportunity for me as well to just see the surrounding and also to be able to do some video as well, vlog while walking down to the airport. While walking down from Ibiza style hotel to go and catch the flight to Kumasi, I was stopped while recording this particular video. Wow, I can't really believe it. Uh, I'm really here walking on the street of Ghana. Sorry. What is it? And it was really a case of something that I thought like maybe somebody just doing their job and just telling me that, you know, you can't really record around this area. And then I just apologized and then I thought that was it. But, you know, it wasn't that easy and simple. And, um, you know, this man then took me to one place and I bought his bus and another bus up to the head of the security services at Kotoko International Airport. It got to the time when I was really scared and then it just took a a long time a long conversation about a lot of things and then it got to a point when you know had to they had to ask me a lot of questions even about my nationality and uh, as soon as they just found out that I'm a Nigerian and then their countenance changed and I, and, and I was really like really scared at that point and what is really going to happen to me I even got to a point where I had to talk to them about Woody Maya that I'm a content creator I'm not doing anything bad here i'm not a spy or anything i'm just here to just experience as an african to just visit another african country and um, you know a long 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 conversation but eventually i was released so this is the thing that going back to this for me i will say this is half full because it's a case of like a, it's one type of analogy about like are you positive about something or are you being negative about something um you know are you optimistic or <laughs> pessimistic or something like that so all around that uh, sort of like um ideas about um your attitude to life really so for me i look at this as i look at that situation that I found myself like i was uh, stopped or arrested or whatever you call it um you know by the security services and uh, yeah so for me it was a glass half uh, full the reason why i say glass full um half full not half empty i mean this is something that you can read about you can google it and read about it because don't want to be going too much talking about half full and half empty but but basically, so what I'm saying is that I took um, some positive thing from that experience. And one of the things I took from it is that somebody is doing their job. So even though I was stopped and um, recording a video on the road or at the airport, it shouldn't really be any big deal because like in the UK, <laughs> it's not really a big deal. Even at, um, you know, Etro airport, even on my way to Ghana, I recorded some video there. Nobody really stopped me and asked me what am I doing or anything. It's not, it's not really like anything big deal. But I haven't said that for somebody to um, to stop me, that means, you know, somebody is there and doing his job. So whatever is the policy, because different countries have different law and different, you know, policy about different things, um, uh, legislation and all of that. So if that is part of the legislation of Ghana, um, you know, that means somebody is there doing their job. So I give them kudos for that, uh, for stopping me. And then another thing really is the fact that, you know, they were professional about the way they went about, you know, stop me and asking me questions and querying and all of that. So it was, for me, it was all professional, even though 
At the point I was a bit panicked and I was really very scared that what might really happen to me. But I still have to say that, you know, they were professional. So why I said so is that, you know, the, there wasn't anybody, you know, harassing me. So I wasn't harassed. I wasn't um, molested or anything. You know, I wasn't rough on dude. Uh, I wasn't beaten or anything like that. I wasn't asking, asked to take my trousers off or remove my clothes or um, my camera wasn't smashed. Um, they didn't. Well, at some point, they collected my camera from me, but it wasn't really long before they um, handed it back to me. And then they didn't really take it anywhere other than why were they um, having conversation and they were asking me questions. And another thing that I have to say as well is that, you know, in Africa, a lot of things that go on, and a lot of these are there on the internet as well in terms of video there on YouTube. I've seen some few video about corruption, which I've seen, even seen some very recently. Um, I think there's even one from Wodemaya uh, in uh, Benin Republic. So it, it, sometimes they can maybe collect money from you uh, because of the money that is not going to be recorded anywhere. So which boils down to sort of like corruption. Um, so, but there wasn't anything like that. So they didn't ask me, I'm talking about my experience in Ghana now. They didn't ask when they, when they, for me to be released, they didn't ask me to have to give them some money or even the, well, I'm not going to say it's junior, it's possibly not junior officer, but I'm saying the person, the particular person that stopped me, um, I think he's, uh, he said his name is Commander or something like that. He wasn't really, he didn't ask me for money or trying to get some money from me. Eventually, even after I was released and I had to write statement and all of that, he kind of like, it even helped me to take me uh, so that I could, so that I wouldn't um, miss my flight to Kumasi. He was the one that showed me where to go for me to be able to uh, find my way really quickly. And uh, yeah, so which is, I found really um, a, a, a kind of like a professional really. So um, yeah, so again for me, it's, it was a case of um, glass, even though it wasn't, this glass, you know, wasn't full, but you know, half full, I would say, not half empty. So the whole experience, um, yeah. So maybe some things that they need to learn um, in terms of like the age of social media, uh, thinking about, you know, knowing the, uh, that we're not living in age where you have TikTokers, you have uh, Instagrammers or um, you know, YouTubers or content creators in various uh, sort of platform where they are just there to promote the country. So I was there to promote Ghana, not where. I was there to experience Ghana, but at the same time, when I pull video out, you know, you're never going to know who is watching that video. That might really, um, you know, inspire somebody else to want to come to Ghana. And then when people come, it's all about for tourism. And then when tourists come, they spend money and that money go into the economy. And this is the way things work. So maybe they need to really understand that fact that, you know, we're not living in the age of social media. Or maybe on my part, maybe I was supposed to have taken permission. And I think I learned lesson as well. It was a lesson learned for me that, you know, another country, next time I'm visiting another country, um, I possibly will ask them, like maybe around airport or sensitive um, area of the country, I would possibly ask that, is it okay for me to do a video here? And then if they say it's against their policy, then I can just put my camera in my bag and just um, go about, you know, having the normal experience I want to have. So yeah, so that's something that say, I think like if anybody from um, Ghana security staff at the airport, if they are watching, maybe it's something that they need to um, take note as well. Like, you know, if somebody um, wants to just do video to, to share their experience or to record their experience or being around that area, maybe they shouldn't be looking at everybody that, you know, maybe somebody is the spy or anything, but yeah, I can't really take them their job anyway, and I don't know their policy, but it's just an observation about the, the current uh, world that we live in with the age of, you know, media and, uh, you know, and uh, social media. So, but anyway, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Um, yeah, so, but for me, at the end of the day, it wasn't, I would say, it's um, glass half full, not half empty. It was a 
bit of terrifying experience at one time or during the period of the conversation or where they were taking me around a little bit terrifying sometime but eventually at the end of it then re reflecting back yeah so i would say is half half full half empty no half full glass half full let me drink mm. nice water mm. thanks for watching and god bless